Torres, the referee that night, Joe. Five years older as Halstead, similar in height. Morrison is heavier and a, a one inch uh, reach advantage for what that's worth here this evening. And some CompuBox statistics, Joe. All right, here we go. We've got Morrison versus Mercer, who, and he was doing quite well up until the time that he got knocked out. Uh, you know, 50% of his punches. Now, look at this Halstead against Tomashek. Now, who? Tomashek, 61%. I don't think Muhammad Ali on his best day landed 61% of his punches. But nevertheless, this is a guy from Oklahoma that he fought, and that's the stat they have. I would have liked to have seen the stat against Greg Page or Tony Tubbs or Buster Douglas. Our Nevada State rules, 10-point must system, no standing eight count, and now the three-knockdown rule will be in effect, unlike our last fight. Saved by the bell only in the uh, last round, and this is a 10-round fight, and only the referee can stop the action. So. Let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following officials have been assigned to ringside to score this bout on a 10-point must system. They are Patricia Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Dalby Shirley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge, referee Toby Gibson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, Top Rank Incorporated, and the King of Beers, Budweiser presents 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the royal blue trunks and weighs in at an even 214 pounds from Midwest City, Oklahoma. His professional record, 77 victories, 59 KOs, eight defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, the very colorful Jerry Wimpy Halstead. And his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the stars and stripes with black trim and weighing in at 223 and one half pounds, fighting out of Kansas City. He brings a professional record of 29 victories with 25 KOs, only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy the Duke Morrison. I take his robe off now. Okay, gentlemen, I'm giving you both your instructions in your respective dressing rooms. I want to reiterate. I want no late hit out, intentional late hit after the bell. No intentionally hitting the man while he's down and obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Somebody's going to have to take that bandana off sooner or later. <laughs> oh, there it is. Nice look between the two boxers. Yeah. Total career rounds, and, and Halstead has lasted past the sixth round his career 27 times. Morrison has never fought that distance. You know, with that, hall, with that record hall, uh, Halstead has, he really should be in the Boxing Hall of Fame. All those wins, but all in Oklahoma. Morrison been under a sun lamp, and here's the uh, bronze boxer here against Wimpy Halstead. I thought he's supposed to be training in a gym. <laughs> Equipped with sun lamp, uh, masseuse, and uh, facial uh, therapist. But no, uh, right here you can see Tommy Morrison starting out a lot slower than he did against Ray Mercer. By this time, he had already thrown probably 15, 20 punches against Mercer. Here he's thrown one jab so far and landed a good okay, solid one. Come on. Morrison's people say what they're trying to get him to do is relax, not be too aggressive, but while you're relaxing, keep up the defense. That's the trick. Come on, now hold the box out here. Box it out of here. Okay, stop punching. Well, it's the second time Hall said has really slipped underneath uh, Morrison's left arm and hit him to the body pretty well, and that's a sign of his experience right there. He's gotten inside and landed a couple decent shots to Morrison's body. Toby Gibson, an active referee thus far. A little over a minute gone in the initial round. Okay, stop punching. Mix it up, coming in, quit holding. Stop punching, stop punching. Real sluggish start midway through the first round. <laughs> Nice left hook by Tommy Morrison, but uh, Halston put out his jab and really kind of stunned Morrison right. there for a second. I think it was the jab that woke up Morrison. That's right. Morrison, big swing and a miss, and then digs the right hand that uh, Halston claims was low. Right, exactly. That did. It landed on the, uh, the back of the gluteus maximus there, and uh, Halston complained. 
Carson with strong right hand to the body and now punching in the clinches. Of course, of course, hold you, come here. Of course, Halstead on, punching to the back. Mix it up of, inside and quit, uh, holding and wrestling. Let's go. Punching to the back of uh, Tommy Morrison's kidneys, which is an illegal punch there, getting him back for that low blow. The story goes, and I don't know if it's true, that once in Bismarck, North Dakota, Wimpy Halstead swung and missed so bad that he came around and hit himself in the back of the head, and down he went. I find that a little bit far-fetched, but that's part of the lore and allure of Wimpy Halstead. Of course, out of those 80-some-odd fights, Wimpy Halstead using all the dirty tricks, and he gave a little lace to the face of Tommy Morrison here. Are you saying Halstead's a dirty fighter? Well, I'm saying right now he's getting a little irritated and he's getting Morrison back for that low blow. And so far he's given him kidney punches and a lace to the face. And they just banged heads on the inside watch there. Watch the head, gentlemen, watch the head. This is just the first round. Another big swing and miss with the left hand. Fascinating first round. And apparently Halstead wants to stand. Water, water. Oh, I have been. Okay, take a slow. Relax, relax. You feel all right? Okay. Listen to me. You don't slipping, slipping. And every now and then, you gotta get close to you. You gotta put that hand in my hand. Don't get, no, you don't need to rough stuff. You outbox this guy. This guy don't have it, man. He don't know. Look, he made me to hit you. Let's get in there. Can you settle down for me? Listen to me. Listen to me, baby. Listen, Listen, relax, relax. Relax. <coughs> relax. It's not big. All right. Whenever time you miss, let's keep that head. Keep, keep yourself up. See Halstead pulling the George Foreman, standing, not using the stool. Frank Newton telling him, you don't need to be a dirty fighter, just uh, do your thing. That's right. He said, forget the rough housing, just use your experience and try to outbox Tommy Morrison. And in a sense, Tommy Morrison has made a couple mistakes. Instead of using that jab, he's jumped in with a couple hooks and missed terribly with it. So he's really got to set up his punches with this jab. There was another right punch hand. that strayed up, low at the belt up. line. Yeah, he's worn to keep him up. That's right. Toby Gibson is right on top of that. That right hand connected. Halstead was moving Stop backwards punching. at the time to the body. Halstead a little busier in that first round, threw 29 punches, landed 9 for 31%. Morrison, 20 punches, landed 6 for 30%. Boy, Morrison snapping Halstead's head back with the jabs, then the left hook connects. And he hurt him with that left hook, but that's what set it up with those two jabs, Len. You heard the ooh from the crowd when the left hook of Tommy Morrison connected. Let's go, let him up. Morrison firing the combination and complaining about the holding on. Well, you got to figure Wimpy Halstead is still a little bit hurt, and uh, he wants to try to tire Tommy Morrison out in no better way than hold and make Morrison grapple a little bit. But Morrison isn't grappling. He's just kind of dropping his, you know, being very loose on the inside. Another low right hand for Morrison midway through the second round. That right hook to the body is straying low from Tommy Morrison. Exchange of jabs. Stop punching. Toby Gibson, an active referee here this evening, through two rounds. He's got close to 500 Stop pounds punching. of Stop fighter punching. in there, Stop and he's punching. really going to have his work cut out for him if this goes a few rounds. Again, the crisp jab from Morrison, snapping the head back on Halstead before it set up a big left hook. been a clean around. Well, Frank Newton, uh, uh, Halstead's trainer, really, uh, Toby Gibson ought to give him a gold medal for that because he made life for uh, Toby Gibson a lot easier in the ring by telling him that. Okay, no, 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 wrestling. Come on, come on, come on. Side of 30 seconds remaining in the second round. Another good combination from Tommy Stop Morrison. Stop and Halstead up. hangs on again, talking to him. They don't like each other. if he continues to hold the way he has been. Crowd like that round a lot better. 
pull punch out. Let's go back to the round here where Morrison opened up that left hook for himself by using that jab. And here it is. One, and he follows it again. Right here, steps in again. Two, fell a little short. The second one fell a little short, but the first one was a nice stiff jab. I think we have a sequence here where there, the left hook uh, followed up by a fainting jab. And that wobbled Wimpy Halstead and, of course, sent him reeling back a little bit. You know, Halstead in his 80-something fights has only been stopped four times. So, you know, chances are in his favor that he's not going to get stopped by Morrison. And, and if Morrison does stop him, it's a big feather in his cap. Here, regardless of where he's had his fights. Back in your corner. Back in your corner, both of you. Round three of a 10-rounder. No title on the line here. Heavyweights, Wimpy Halstead in the blue. Tommy Morrison in the red, white, and blue. And black. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. And Halstead under the jab to try to get something going. Another one from Wimpy Halstead. Morrison in a momentary relaxing mood. Well, that jab continues to snap that head of Wimpy Halstead. Strong weapon from Tommy Morrison tonight, the jab. Of course, Wimpy Halstead's whole game plan in his training camp here are to extend to, is to extend Tommy Morrison late into the fight. They're hoping what occurred against Morrison will happen uh, tonight. But at the rate of what Tommy Morrison is doing, he looks very good, and he does look like a more relaxed fighter in this fight. And, and conversely, Morrison's people wouldn't mind a longer fight to dispel the myths and prove to Tommy that he can last longer in fights. That's right. So both of them are looking for a longer fight. Morrison again landing on Halstead. But look at Halstead really maintained his balance and his composure. Of course, hitting Tommy Morrison to the back of the head. That's a rabbit punch, and he's getting warned for it. <laughs> Halstead with the showboat aft with the right hand. Oh, that's a little demoralizing. Morrison hit him with some great shots, and Halstead came back. Came and back the, rough. And the crowd now squarely on the side of Whippy Halstead with a minute approaching in the third round. The crowd likes this guy. Okay, stop watching. Now, let's see. Wimpy Hall said, what has he done tonight? Uh, rabbit punched. Oh, another low blow by Morrison. Last time, Tommy, keep Lacing him up. Lacing and a forearm. He's really used every dirty trick in the book tonight. And a war warning from Tommy Gibson on the low blow. Okay, punching, Tommy punching. Morrison again. That's right. He hit him with a right uppercut, and it's straight very low, right on the between the hip and the, and the thigh. Inside of 30 seconds of round three. Okay, stop watching. Come on, come on, come on. And a good exchange. Stop watching. Wimpy Halstead is a very That's awkward time fighter, time. really. The, the, well, this, we've got a timeout here. What's this for? We're taking a, a point away. I believe that point was taken away from Wimpy Halstead. Am, am I mistaken? For holding? That? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Clean it up inside. Stop watching. Stop, but that's Halstead. it for the third. And Halstead walking to the wrong corner there. The neutral corner. Slow. <laughs> Towel off my mouth. He's not a, okay, I know. But he hit you low three or four times. Just slight clean. Throw jabs, throw jabs, throw jabs, throw jabs. The guy does not like jabs. Every time he does a couple jabs, shoot the right hand, baby, okay? Relax. Don't let this guy blow you cool. You cannot box this guy. Whippy, you're doing it. You have boxing. Michael Katz, how have you scored it through three? Well, taking away a point uh, from Wimpy for holding, as the referee did in the last round, I have it uh, by two points for Morrison. But he shows a little bit of lack of defense without his usual aggression. 
He's just standing there. He's, he's getting hit more than he usually does at this stage. Well, Michael, that's what his camp was talking about to us this morning. That's that's the fine line they're trying to dance. Less aggressive, but more defense. Many fighters, their their best defense is their offense. Here we go in round four. Well, and holding on again. That, you know, you already taken one point away from him. We can add a headlock to the um, to the list of uh, tactics that Wimpy Hall said has used tonight. A one point deduction in the third round from Halstead for holding. Not much, let's go, let him go. And Halstead obviously concerned with the big left hook of Tommy Morrison because he's keeping that right hand planted right next to the side of his face when Morrison gets close enough within striking distance. Okay, stop wrestling. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let him up. Toby Gibson with his hands full again. Another point. One more time. It's now lost two points. Let him up. And Halstead's talking to the referee, Toby Gibson. Now, Wimpy Halstead, oh, there's a, a late hit off of a break. But Wimpy Halstead feels that he's being, these points are being deducted unfairly. And, oh, nice little left hook to the liver from Halstead. But if he gets warned, one or two more times or another point he could be disqualified in this fight and wouldn't be beyond Toby Gibson to do it to him. Stop punching, stop punching. And Halstead again while well, he's held with the left hand is punching with the right. That's exactly what Toby Gibson is talking to him about. Good right hand from Tommy Morris. Halstead shakes his head. So relaxation is one thing, Joe, but I'm, I'm looking for that big Tommy Morrison flourish, which we haven't seen at all. Well, he's having a difficult time. Whippy Halstead is mauling, he's, he's mugging, he's doing all, every trick in the book, really, to try to throw off Tommy Morrison's game plan, and he's doing it quite well. Halstead landing with the right hand, well, he holds with the left. I mean, those are borderline rabbit punches that he's throwing, but he's, it's a legal punch to throw those short chopping right hands to the side of the head, and they're irritating, if nothing else, on the inside. Morrison sneaks in the left hand, final seconds of the fourth round. Morris, Morrison has really got to follow that jab and get off quick to the body once he gets on the inside. He's, he's given Halstead a chance to grab on him. Let's go, stop. And that does it for the fourth round. Ain't no, that's why I have to keep, keep pushing him. Only when you start jabbing. Like, All right, here we go through four rounds. Halstead has really been frustrating Morrison. There's one of the few times that Morrison has been able to land a clean shot. Of course, uh, Wimpy says no, it shakes it off, grabs him behind the head, and, well, later on, he would have just spun Morrison off. But these are the type of tactics he's been using all night. Stay inside as long as they clean. If it's dirty, I'm breaking them. You'd be tight inside there, okay? Now, what you gotta do is you gotta change your level, get it below his, and start using your uppercuts and your hooks. Be violent inside. He's getting on top of my head, bird, like we knew okay. he would. Okay, well, then that's because you're, you're getting in too close before you start punching. Right before Punch to get that. in. Right before he comes for the clinch. And Halstead continues to stand between rounds. And Morrison in a two-way conversation That's with right. Tommy Vergetz. Well, Vergetz wants him to get off. Don't put his head inside first and then let Halstead maul him and pull his head down. He wants him to get inside and get off quickly before he gets a chance to grab on. Good combination, and Halstead is down. And hurt. He's trying to shake his head off, and he's recuperating. You all right? That's it. That's it. And a good call from Toby Gibson. Good when call. Halstead said, where am I if I'm not mistaken? But he didn't wait for the pervert. Usually the, the question for the referee is, where are you? <laughs> he gave him the answer before the question. He said he was barely all right, right. at answer to was, the question. Was that what it was? 
Well, whatever the answer was, it wasn't the right one for Toby Gibson, and he stopped it, and probably deservingly so. Well, did you see those feet come up on the knockdown? Oh, man. A good left-right combination from Tommy Morrison. Take a look at this. Look. Well, this was a devastating right hand, and it was one of the few punches that Morrison was able to land throughout the fight, and it was uh, infrequently. Here we go. Slips, boom, right over the jab of uh, Wimpy Halstead and followed it with a nice short left uppercut that really snuck in there. And, and there it goes. feet go flying. Boy. Eyes a... closed and glazed right there. Here we go again. Slips the jab right over the top. Right. Got everything and the behind left it. uppercut. Down he goes. Mm. At this point, I thought Halstead was really out of it. He, he tried to shake off the cobweb. He sure shook did. his head from side to side, but the good. Good safe stoppage by right. Toby Gibson. When asked if he was already said no, because uh, I think he, uh, Halston's been around long enough to know that the end was uh, imminent, really, at that point. Well, but he's only 0-4 in Las Vegas. It's consistent. Well, like many other people that come to this town, 0 for Vegas. <laughs> Including myself, and I'm going to go up into the ring right okay, now and Joe. speak to Tommy Morrison. So Morrison wanted to prove he uh, would not run out of gas in the latter rounds, but again, a fifth round stoppage. That was the round that Mercer stopped him. So let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Toby Gibson has decided that Jerry Wimby Halstead was unable to continue after that knockdown. The official time, 30 seconds, that's 3-0, 30 seconds of the fifth round. The winner by TKO, his record now, 30 victories, 25 KOs, Tommy, the Duke, Morrison. And uh, a pat on the back from uh, Wimpy Halstead, so the bad blood that was initially before the fight not carrying over to the post-fight. Tommy Morrison now with 26 knockouts, 30 and 1. And Michael Katz uh, with us at ringside. Uh, good safe stoppage, Michael. Do you agree? Oh, I think uh, I, I couldn't really hear, but it sounded as if the referee asked him, are you all right? And it looked like uh, Wimpy just said, no, I'm not all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a good stoppage anyway, because I think he would have been hurt after that. Uh, impressed with Morrison's patience. However, when he is not being aggressive the way he usually does in the all-out attack, he seems to be liable to the jab of all punches. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at under both eyes, there's a little puffiness. Uh, it, it just seems that you know we still have a lot more work to do with this young man, who does have talent, which is more you, more than you can say for some of these other heavyweight contenders. All right, good points, Michael Katz. Let's go up into the ring. My partner Joe Goosen standing by with the winner, Tommy Morrison. Joe, it's yours. All right, here we go, Tommy Morrison. This has had been one of your most awkward, toughest fights. Uh, irregardless of the fact that you won it, was he as the most difficult fighter you fought? Uh, I wouldn't say probably the, the difficult, but as far as ring savvy, he has a lot of it, and it just took a while. Just uh, yeah, I think we showed some signs of maturity, and that's just yeah, being patient and wait till the till the shot came and being there, take advantage of it. And that's what we did. How frustrating was it to have him doing all the mauling and lacing and elbowing and everything else he was doing to you? Well, I don't think we were prepared ourselves in every way. I, th I don't think there was anything that he could have done that we would have been surprised about. But uh, you know, the main thing is we we stayed relaxed. Uh, we got a few rounds out of it, and. Uh, that's what we came here to do. Now we feel it's uh, you know one st one positive step in the right direction uh, to become a heavyweight champion of the world. Did this fight go as planned? Uh, is this how you wanted the fight to turn out? I think I think I couldn't have read it better. You know, if I wrote it myself. Uh, we're very excited about you know about the crowd and about being here in Vegas again. Uh, it, it was an exciting fight for us, we, and again, we feel like we made some positive steps, and now we're going to continue to make those steps until we get to where we're going. I understand, though, that you want to step up in competition. You yeah. said you wanted two uh, tune-up fights, and this one was a rough tune-up fight. Where do you want to go from here? Well, at this point, we have a we have a fight I think scheduled sometime in April, and uh, we're just taking one step at a time. And uh, I, at this point, I feel that I'm gaining maturity and the uh, you know experience that I need in the later rounds. Hope we we'll continue to do that, and uh, everything will work out. Great, Tommy. Uh, Bill, uh, I told you this we were planning. We're planning to move up in competition. Our opponents from here on will all be in the top 10, top 15 opponents. We'd like to have Tommy in the top two or three by the end of this year. This April fight that you're talking about, who are you looking for? There could be any one of two or three opponents. Any names? None names yet. When are we going to? When are we going to hear the name? You know how difficult. Once you mention a name, it's very difficult to get that opponent. You know that. Okay. I understand. Like say, uh, hello to all my friends down in Texas and my girlfriend also. <laughs> all right, Tommy. Glad to have you back on uh, TVKO in a winning fashion, and hope to see you again soon.